Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. Today, I want to do more of an overview of the market. So just talk about what's going on in crypto, altcoins, meme coins, but mainly in NFT land. So you might as well start with NFTs. By the way, none of this is financial advice. It is just my opinion, but be careful what you wish for. People who have spent months complaining that Blur killed the NFT market with their Blur bidders. They're finally getting what they wanted as season three of Blur comes to an end. And we have Kobe here, one of the biggest bidders on Blur, pulling all of his bids, showing us how many points he has. But we're finally seeing the true demand for NFTs, which are risk on assets. And it's not very pretty. We have some of the major collections here down bad. Bored Apes have broken under nine ETH. I cannot tell you the last time these were under 10 ETH. Probably three years ago, at least, we have Pudgies basically round tripping. If you bought these things at five ETH, they went all the way up to 22. If you did not sell, they are back down to seven. So it's not looking pretty for NFTs, and I do imagine they will continue to bleed. Now, to be fair, the altcoin market, the meme coin market, they're all bleeding, right? We did have a pretty nasty correction across the board. So this isn't an isolated incident just for ETH NFTs or NFTs in general, but the timing definitely does suck. Which brings me to the next topic, which is NFT whitelists, upcoming NFT projects. Because this is by far the most requested video that I get. People want me to make videos on upcoming whitelists that I think are gonna perform well. But the issue is there aren't that many new projects that I haven't already spoken about or covered that are getting me that excited. Now it doesn't mean nothing is going to perform well in the past few months, even though things for NFTs haven't been the best, there have been tens of thousands of dollars to be made off of NFT mints. And there's basically two types of NFTs that I do think will continue to perform well, despite the market conditions. And those are the low supply free mints, especially when they are linked with some sort of token airdrop and the team has to go raise, or they're trying to build up hype for their token, because more often than not, they will end up market making their NFT, or there's just going to be enough demand because people are super hyped about the token. But a lot of these projects do do market making for the NFTs just to show how how much demand there is for their token. The other type is just going to be meme projects, things that have to do with frogs or Pepe or whatever. Now there are a couple of projects that I do have my eyes on that I haven't spoken about so far on this channel. The first one is Lingo. It is a free mint. It is a low supply of 555 NFTs. It is attached to their upcoming token. And while they haven't announced all of the utilities for this NFT just yet, we do know a few. These are going to get you a maximum guaranteed token allocation. It is going to get you into the lowest price for their community sale and you're going to get a 2x multiplier on your unlock at TGE. So if you've been farming their airdrop, this is definitely a project you should try to get whitelisted for. I did make a full tutorial on how to farm their airdrop. I will link that in the description down below or above if you're on YouTube. But even if you didn't farm their airdrop, I do still think this is a good NFT to have in relation to their token. I invest in their token. I am bullish on it. It plays around the whole RWA rewards narrative and RWA is one of the biggest narratives this cycle. Now, another project that I am seeing a ton of demand for their whitelist is Mutatoads. The team behind this is the team behind Serum and the quality of production for this video is quite good. It is gonna be a free mint, so there is zero risk to minters. It is on Solana, so there are no gas fees. It plays around the whole frog meta. There have been a ton of projects that have to do with frogs or Pepe that have done well in the recent past. And again, it's free, so you have nothing to lose. So this is definitely one that is on my must have whitelist list. But outside of these, I was looking at one of my older videos, specifically one where I spoke about 10 upcoming whitelists. And even though it was recorded over a month ago, seven out of 10 of these have not minted yet. Now, why is that the case? Well, a lot of projects don't want to risk launching their NFT in these market conditions, especially if you look on this list, a lot of these are Gen 2 projects where they're charging you money, whereas the first drop was free, so a lot less risk. But if we take a look on Dune, you're gonna see that the number of unique traders is the lowest it has been all year. If you look throughout the entire month of June, pretty much every single day, we were under 3,000 unique 
buyers, 3,000 unique wallets. So not even buyers, since a lot of us have multiple wallets, there really isn't that many people trading NFTs right now. So it's really hard for some of these projects, especially when they're launching, you know, five, 10K collections. Like where is that secondary demand going to come from? Now, I don't want to be overly bearish. This doesn't mean there's not plenty of opportunities to make money with NFTs. Completely the opposite. If we take a look at the three other projects on that list that either did mint or did have their sale. The first one being Borpa, which is an extremely hyped whitelist. Of course, it's a token, not an NFT, but nevertheless, there was a whitelist for this, which was selling for close to $4,000 on the secondary whitelist market. And if we take a look at how much the token is selling for here on Wales market, it is selling for roughly 14 to 15 X the whitelist price. So people are very bullish on this one. Please do keep in mind both Exaverse or the secondary whitelist marketplaces, as well as Wales market and other OTC markets, the prices are often overinflated. I've met a few teams where even themselves, they went and bought up their own tokens just to increase the hype. I'm not saying Borpa did this at all, but just always take this stuff with a grain of salt. I'm super bullish on Borpa. I do think it's gonna do well, but there's way too many people asking me, do you think I'm gonna get a 100X out of this project? A 100X would put it at 5 560 million FDV, which is totally possible for a meme coin. However, do remember there's thousands of people who have whitelist for $200 who are all thinking I'm going to get a hundred X. If every single one of them has $20,000 of this token, that's going to be a ton of selling pressure. But nevertheless, one that I am hyped about, if we look at the two others on this list that did already mint and did well, there was last Odyssey, which was a thousand dollars of profits if you traded it correctly as well as Frux, which is an ordinals project where ordinals are down so bad, but you were still able to get like 13 to $1,500 out of this thing if you played it correctly. So again, plenty of opportunities. I know we do have another mint coming up on Bitcoin, which is Lucid, which they just announced their mint price. It's gonna be 0.00187 Bitcoin. So I'm really interested to see how this one's gonna go. They're facing two uphill battles here. One is the entire market nuking. The other one is ordinals being down bad. So I wish them the best and I hope they manage to not only mint out, but to be profitable for minters as well as secondary traders. But the whole point of that was to say there are projects that are doing well and there's still seven left on that list that I made seven out of 10, they don't even have mint dates yet. So there's still plenty of chance to get whitelist for those. So the, all the people who DM me saying, Hey, make a upcoming whitelist video. Like, dude, there's plenty of whitelists that you can go get right now. And just even those ones don't want to launch. So I'm sure there's a lot that haven't even announced yet. And they're just waiting for a more bullish time in the market to announce their project. Now, the next question I always get or questions is when is all this going to change? What's it going to take? for people to come back into NFTs and will we ever get another NFT cycle like we did in 2021. And I do feel that Wizard of Soho really hit this uh, last week with this post. It's a really long post, we're not gonna read it. I'll put it in the description down below. You can go read it yourself, but he basically says, well, he's talking about altcoins here, but it applies to NFTs nonetheless. He basically says these are high risk assets, so risk on assets, and the money tends to flow from less risky stuff into more risky, and the money isn't making it to the more risky stuff. Again, when you look at these Dune statistics that I showed for NFTs, there are really not a lot of people trading NFTs. So it's just the same people playing hot potato with each other. And even worse than altcoins and meme coins, NFTs are a niche within a niche because crypto crypto is already a niche, right? If you ask your normie friends, it, it, they're all in the your web two friends, they don't care about NFTs or they don't care about even crypto, right? How many of your friends have been calling you asking you, how do I buy Bitcoin or how do I buy, you know, whatever meme coin that's coming out? Probably not that many. Well, it's even worse when it comes to NFTs because it's a niche within that niche. So the question of when will you know NFTs be relevant again or even Web3 be re relevant again is a way bigger question than just Web3 in our little bubble. It's a macro question of when will people be looking to allocate into high risk assets. And for that, I feel we need rates to go down and I feel we need the government to turn the printers back on. And even if that did happen, I don't expect NFTs to just immediately full send. 
What I've been saying over and over again is for NFTs to go up, I feel we need people to get rich in crypto. So altcoins and meme coins. And then once they feel that is tapped, they're gonna be looking for the next casino to go play in, and that is going to be NFTs. Now, right now, the current casino, even though you know things aren't looking too pretty overall, the current casino is still meme coins. That's what's getting all the attention, both on the timeline and in Discord, in Telegram. Everybody wants to be a meme coin trader and make millions of dollars from $12. And I know a lot of people are frustrated with this. They don't understand it. They wish money would flow into to the utility altcoins, but you can't argue with the market. You just have to accept what the market is and then either participate or don't. I, for one, would rather participate because even yesterday or two days ago, by the time you watch this video, when the entire market was nuking, there were multiple meme coin plays that pulled crazy numbers. There was Billy, which went to, I believe, 60 million FTV. And there was also a new Trump coin that is being rumored to be the official Trump coin by Martin Shkreli, even though I don't think it's above Martin Shkreli to, you know, pretend something is real, make millions of dollars, and then be like, oopsies, I was wrong. Whether it's legit or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is the narrative. And this thing, it went over 400 million FTV. And there are a couple of groups that absolutely cooked on this token. So again, even though the market's down, if you're in the right niche that currently has the money flowing in it and has the attention, you have plenty of opportunities to make money. And unfortunately for us, NFTs are not where both the money and attention are. Again, there are some opportunities to make plays if you're in the right groups, if you're winning the right whitelist raffles. But if not, if you're just casually doing this, it's going to be very hard to be a profitable trader with NFTs. Now, like I said, I think all this will change once people start to feel rich again. So what is going to make that happen? I think there's a couple of things. One of them is potentially the ETH ETF, which is rumored to be as early as July 2nd. If that does happen, hopefully it ends up saving our altcoin bags, but I'm really not holding my breath for that. What I think is going to get a lot of the normies to come in to Web3 is going to be Bitcoin breaking $100,000, which I 100% believe will happen. And the reason for them coming in at 100K is all the headlines. Everybody's going to see Bitcoin broke 100K. And for some weird reason, they would rather FOMO when Bitcoin is at 100K instead of when it's at 10K. Now, when do I see that happening? Potentially later this year, if not next year. I think the summer is going to be rough. I think we potentially are going to go down to 60K Bitcoin or maybe a little lower, or we're just going to trade sideways for the rest of the summer. I don't see all this turning around until late Q3, early Q4. And then with the elections, I do think things are going to turn around and then it is going to get very bullish. So overall, I'm still super bullish, but right now, I do think things are going to suck for a while. So that's my opinion on the current market conditions as well as NFTs. Again, I will continue to make NFT videos on the projects that I think are outliers, the ones that I think are going to perform well compared to everything else. But I just wanted to address this and just be realistic with you guys. Cause again, I get asked all the time, Hey, make one of your upcoming whitelist videos. And like, there's not even 10 projects that are popping up that I'm bullish on for me to even put in a video, but I will continue doing the research. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thanks for watching the Crypto Gorilla. Peace. Uh, 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 uh